Welcome to episode 265 of Grid Talk. Today, we are here to discuss qualifying for the 2023 Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. My name is Lou Edwards, and joining me today, we have Grid Talk co host and host of our new uh, Formula Talk show, Sophia Richmond and Tom Downey. Hi. Hello. And from Hit the Apex, we have Jawad Yakub. Hey, guys. But before we get into the episode, we must thank our sponsor for this episode, Bet Online. Bet Online remains your number one source for all your college basketball betting this season. Get analysis of every play, prop, and point at Bet Online. You'll find the latest odds, bracket contests, team matchups, and game trends at Bet Online. Updated odds for everything from live games, the conference championships, right through to the final four and championship game. Bet Online is your college basketball headquarters this season. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to sign up and you'll receive 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Be sure to use our promo code BLEAV, that's B L E A V, all in caps, to receive your bonus. BetOnline.ag, where the game starts. So, Tom, Sergio Perez put it on poll. Um, I believe he was your your prediction um, for the poll taker. And it's kind of made a lot of pressure on his race because, well, surely he has to win it now that his teammate's down in 15th. You would say so, yeah. But Max could start in Bahrain and he'd still win tomorrow. The the, the kind of form he's in, you know, he's, he's on an absolute purple patch at the minute. Um, but the, the pressure is absolutely on Perez. He could have won it last year. He got he got undone quite badly by a um by a really ill timed safety car, which which kind of scuppered his race. Um, given that Perez's strength has always been in a race situation, not in a qualifying situation, and he is you know he's very very good around street circuits. Recording away. in progress. He's, he's, he's going to waltz away into the lead, and that's that. But with Checo, you know, I, I like Checo. He's a good driver, but he's not the same level as someone you know, like Max or Leclerc or you know Russell or Hamilton or, or, or whoever. So it will be very interesting to see how he gets on tomorrow. I want him to win, but I also want Alonso to win. So yeah, I'm I'm a bit conflicted. Yeah, I mean it's 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 a tough one, uh, especially for me as a big Fernando Alonso fan. But of course, he Sophia he wasn't the one who qualified on the front row. It was Charles Leclerc, and Ferrari have had been an odd weekend. You know, we throughout practice we didn't see anything from them. We were like, okay, Ferrari are looking a bit odd. They're probably going to be on the same pace as the Mercedes, and boom, Charles Leclerc P two, but we'll start from P twelve tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, it's been a mixed bag. You've seen it uh, even in qualifying as well, leaving it to the last minute. Um, in free practice, they kept on getting holed up uh, by traffic throughout uh, trying to do hot laps and everything for it. With this circuit as well, timing is key. And for some reason, the strategy is still not up to where it probably should be. And then obviously, again, as you mentioned, with the NL- uh, engine penalty he will take for a new ice, it's not a good start for Ferrari. It's literally 180 from how Red Bull was from last season. So hopefully you maybe can be flipped around and maybe Ferrari towards the second half of the season can actually pull it out of the bag. But it's just absolutely astonishing that some of these calls being made so early on with when to go, when to come out, when to do fast laps. Um, I remember hearing on the quality they wanted to do uh, two cool laps and they said no as well because it would be stuck really bad in traffic for the last like five minutes or so. But, and like 
the penalty so early as well. I mean, a lot of teams are making upgrades this uh, this race in Jeddah, but to have a 10 place grid penalty already, last time that was in 2021, I think for Yuki for the same thing as well, but his from crashes. Charles has not had a crash yet. He's just had engine failures this whole time. And we're going to see a lot more penalties, I think, from Charles with throughout the season because it's 23 races, which is a lot. And then obviously with more sprint races as well coming in, I don't know how far he's going to stand, uh, stand up with it. Yeah, it is, um, it is a weird one because Ferrari's season has already been kind of screwed and it's like, what are they going to do from here? But a strong result from Leclerc, maybe a good recovery could... um. To do really well. So, Judd, we will move on to the man who will be starting alongside uh, Czech on the front road, Fernando Alonso. There's been a lot of talk going into this weekend. You know, he's in garage number 33. He's chasing his 33rd career win. He's starting on the front row. Do you think he can do it? Um. Oh, hey, like every fibre in me wants to say yes, just to see the old dog actually um, break that uh, drought that, Tom, like Tom said, goes back for best part of a decade. Or was it Barcelona 2013? So, yeah, it is coming up on 10 years now to that. But I think what um, we saw in qualifying from him and Aston Martin in general was validation that, yeah, this car is pretty quick. Um, You know, Bahrain, it could have been easy to get caught up in the hype train and whatnot, but because it's such a unique track, it's like how they're going to go um, on different circuits. And Alonso himself said that, that, you know, they'll get a better idea after uh, after Jeddah and, and Albert Park as well, because they're two very different circuits apart from Bahrain. But it, it, it's here, you know, they're, they're on the second row, um, not too far behind the Red Bull in qualifying. And given the fact that, um, you know, Verstappen is starting down the order as well, you know, not saying that Perez is an easy target, but, you know, I feel like Alonso with all his experience and um, his race craft and guile, you know, it could make for an interesting battle because Perez is not the kind of person to give up either or, or relent. So we could have a cracking battle at the front between those two. And, you know, just, just saying Fernando Alonso is going to be fighting for a race win or something. I didn't think I'd be saying ever again um, as a Formula One fan. So it, it's quite exciting. Yeah, it certainly is for me who's waited nearly 11 years of my life, which is half my age <laughs> for him to win another race. Um so, um, Tom, uh, P4 uh, on the oh, P4 in qualifying and P3 on the track. George Russell, he's um, you know, he's had the you know Lewis under his thumb this entire weekend, and yet again he's shown just how quick he is and just how much more he's able to get out of that Merc, which is not competitive, but he's doing a good job to at least get it above one of the Aston Martins and the other Ferrari. Uh, I mean, to be fair, Russell's had Hamilton under his thumb since he joined Mercedes. Um, you know, let's not be around the bush. Uh, it was a it was a surprisingly good result, and I bet that's not something we ever thought we'd say about Mercedes in this over hybrid era. Um, but yeah, uh, Russell did really well because he, he when he did his first flying lap, I think he put it P two. Granted, that was before Perez had been around. I think possibly Leclerc had been around. Um, but still, it was a good lap. He was mixing it up there a lot more than than, than people expected. You know, he's, he's going to start P3 tomorrow. Um, obviously, with Leclerc having the, the penalty. I mean, you know, he, he's, he's sort of primed. It, if, if, say, like a safety car comes out at just the right point and screws over the two drivers in front, he could really benefit from it. And, you know, if, if the Merc has enough pace going around there, you know, go, go, you know sort of pounding around Jeddah, then, you know, he, he, he's definitely got a sort of sniff at a podium. Um, and, and, you know, I don't want to jinx anything, but we've seen two Red Bull powertrain-powered cars have issues this weekend because the Reese missed all of FP3 whilst um, AlphaTauri changed the components. And obviously, as we'll get on to later, Max's car chewed itself 
Um, you know, he shifted in seventh, and um, and then and then the uh, the gearbox just went backdrop and left. Um, you know, so it was uh, you know, so the, the, you know that's that's half the Red Bull train power car. So who's to say that Perez won't have an issue tomorrow? And if he does, and he conks out, Russell could inherit a, a, a net lead or something. I don't think anybody's hopes up because that is obviously dependent on Mercedes having the race pace tomorrow, and I don't think they will. I think they will probably fall back a bit. You know, I, I you know, I dare say it. Someone like the Alpines may well come sniffing again, provided they don't conk up because you just got to look at the Alpines funny and they DNF. Um, so, um, you know, so, you know, reliability aside, he could get a good result. I think at the very least, it should be some decent points for Mercedes. Again, barring no first lap absolute carnage, you know, past Maldonado, 2012 yeet I'm thinking um you know so you know provided nothing like that happens I would say Russell should should have a good result tomorrow yeah is there every possible uh, every possibility of George Russell uh doing well he's really managed to outdrive this uh this Mercedes so far um but Sophia he may have a bit of a challenge on his hand from the man behind Carlos Sainz um had a very quiet quality didn't really do anything spectacular while it was you know Leclerc at the top of the field Sainz has kind of got on with his day and stuck at P5 which at the end of the day is not the worst position because he will be starting on the second row yeah I mean he left it to last minute a few times I was like texting the chat saying is Sainz gonna be knocked out in Q2 because he was like had pretty much crossed the line, which is a little bit like a little bit of time left to do a final push, and that would got him out of Q2. But yeah, very quiet from him, didn't have any issues going out of the place. But obviously, he has a new ice as well. So my fear is he changes a new ice <laughs> for this um leading up to before the race. Will this new ice fail in the race like it was for Bahrain for Charles? That's what I'm fearful for. And then there will just be another load of penalties for the other Ferrari, which they don't need at all. It's bad enough they already have one. Now they're going to have both, potentially. Especially with ice, you will probably go through about three or four in the season sometimes as well. I'll be without any major crashes. So we'll see. I'm expecting he'll probably stay around the same way, like position that he'll probably starting uh around fourth or fifth definitely in the top five i think potentially if it isn't for the engine or the ice to fail on them yes uh they have got to rely on good old ferrari reliability uh to get them through the race um jared uh p6 for lance stroll uh today got our hopes up slightly when he set a purple first sector we're thinking oh maybe what what could lance do here but it wasn't to be, and he started P6. It's still a solid result from Stroll. Uh, there's definitely pace in that Aston Martin for him to potentially move up tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, like you said, the uh, screens lit up purple in the first sector, and then he had a personal best second, and then just all fell away at the end there. But, you know, let's not forget he's still uh, very much recovering from those injuries that he had um, pre-season. So the fact that, you know, he's anywhere near the sharp end of the grid is is quite miraculous. And I think he earned a lot of respect um, for his result in Bahrain. So this is probably a more demanding track. Um, it's going to be a bit of a test for him physically. But, you know, to be starting sixth, you know, once again, um, kind of in between two Mercedes cars as well is is a big deal. Um, so yeah, you know he's he's doing a pretty good job at the moment. Um, so yeah, don't you know six six is great for for Stroll. Yeah, it is. A, we still do have to, to take that into consideration because he is a uh, he is still recovering and he is doing a, a much better job than what we're used to seeing Stroll doing in in qualifying. It's usually his weaker point, but he's doing mm. very well um, this season. Um, seventh for. The penalty merchant Esteban Ocon, Tom. Um, do you think he'll actually start in his grid box this time? Um, I don't know. I think maybe somebody needs to get him a tape measure just to make sure. Um, you know, or, or, or maybe he needs. You, you, you know, like you have those people when they land an aircraft when they're waving like those glow sticks, or whatever they're called. I think maybe he needs. Um, I think maybe he needs someone to do that. 
But um, joking aside, provided he starts in his grip box properly and doesn't speed in the pit lane and then not serve a penalty properly, he should have a decent race. Um, you know, he said that the the Alpines are um, that. They're looking fairly strong, you know. They left it a bit late to actually show their proper pace, but they were. They were. If, if you look, especially at FB two. Now I know you can't take everything from practice. But if you look at FB two, which is where a lot of the um, you know, a lot of the more representative times were were being done, when they were doing their race sims, they looked pretty strong. You know, you know, they, they were you know, they were pumping in some good times. So maybe well. Um, Maybe we'll we'll see something uh, from, from from them tomorrow. I think for Alpine, they just need a solid weekend, and you know Ocon especially. You see, a solid weekend. Keep keep your nose clean, keep in your pit box, keep out the FIA's like radar, and um, just don't speed in the pit lane. Make sure you have mechanics in counter five, and make sure that you can you know just just don't be stupid, man. You, you, you know you know just um just just. Just keep it clean. Just there's a good chance that you know, sort of like that P six, P seven. That's where you might start to get a good sort of like melee going into turn one. Don't go for any heroics. Do what you did in Hungary 2021, where if some shenanigans goes down in front of you, just zip around the outside and say bye. Um, you know, just 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 take the position that way. Just fuck on, please. Just have a good race, man. <laughs> yeah, um, I think <laughs> I think it'll be one for Alpine, and they'll really want. Um, double points, and they do have every chance to get it, as we'll get on to Pierre Gasly later. Um, but Sophia, we first need to talk about Lewis Hamilton. Um, P8, as I said earlier about George Russell, he's not got the grip of the car that George has at the moment. But considering that Lewis Hamilton was knocked out in Q2 last year, um, or Q1 was and actually it was Q1 last year, he got knocked out. I mean, he can't be too uh, too unhappy. You know, he's in the points. I don't think the Mercedes has that dire of pace to drop out of it. It's just got to make sure he just gets to the end of the race, really, isn't it? Definitely. I mean, he actually was meant to be starting ahead of Alcon, but I think he got a lap time deleted towards the end or if not after qualifying finish. So that's why he's a little bit low compared to if anybody was watching it live. Um it's good for Mercedes. I mean, having both up in the points, and I think that is where they should be more consistently. I feel that Hamilton probably should have been a lot higher than what it was. I don't think he even had... He did a few purple sectors a few times. Same with George as well, but then Aston Martin just completely wiped it. Same with Red Bull. Same with uh, Ferrari. Uh, Ferrari? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I, I think he... Because he's won at this race uh, back uh, two years ago, I think it definitely is possible that he can move up. Do I see him in a podium? Absolutely not. And that's just me being brutally honest. I can see him maybe top five, top six. I have a feeling, the start of the race, with how narrow the, this track is, how fast this track is, given that it's the fastest uh, street circuit and the second fastest track of the season, I think there's going to be a little bit of carnage up at the front. And I think Hamilton could get away with it and come out a little bit cleanly. But I don't think a podium is on the cards for Hamilton. I think it's more likely for George than it is for um, Lewis. But he was very quiet in quality, didn't really do much, kind of just kept it down, except for that one lap time deleted after the end of quality or just before the end of quality um, in Q3. But other than that, quite quiet. I think this is where Mercedes probably will have to be very consistent in that kind of way. There's been a lot of shake um, outside of the drive. The drives, when it comes to like staffing, there's been a lot of staff leaving in, in the news. Lots of media attention as well. So I feel like they just need to keep their head down when it comes to racing, and especially on Sunday as well, have a good result as well. Because right now the media, Mercedes is in the media all the time right now with uh, team departures and rumors of Lewis might be leaving. We don't know. So we'll see. Yeah, definitely we'll see. But he, he hasn't been very positive um, in the media recently. And it, um, if this continues, and especially if his pace of George continues um, to be behind him, he could uh, maybe see the end of Hamilton at Mercedes. But we don't know. Obviously, that's between those uh, two parties. But, Jawad, going to be moving on to someone I'm sure you were particularly happy with today. Um, 
Oscar Piastri. Um, I mean, given how poor the McLaren was last week, to get into the top 10 and not only just get into the top 10 and qualify 10th, but then go faster than one of the Alpines. It's a mega job from Oscar Piastri today. Yeah, very well done from Oscar and his first Q3 appearance coming again at um, quite a quick track. You wouldn't have expected McLaren with their uh, deficiencies at the moment to to be up there and whatnot, but it's a really good job. And I think for him as well, big confidence booster too, because, yeah, you know, these opening races were going to be tricky for them um, and particularly what happened last time at, last time out in Bahrain, um, you know, the boy wasn't doing um, too badly on his side. It was a car that let him down, you know, 13 laps into the race. So hopefully this time he can have a bit more fortune with reliability and actually uh, score points, you know, which, you know, he's got the talent, you know, there's no question about that. And all the um, uh, credibility and, and whatnot reputation he's built, in his junior career, it's a uh, time to put that on show. So yeah, he'll, he'll move up to eighth as well with the Leclerc penalty. So very good opportunity for McLaren to get themselves on the board because um, yeah, after Bahrain, they're sitting last in the constructors championship, which was not something that we would have said coming into the season. No, and the job for points for McLaren is going to be made slightly more difficult with Lando. Um, well out of position, so but we'll get in um to that later. Um, round out the top 10 now, Tom. Um, Pierre Gasly, um, got points in Bahrain, did a brilliant recovery job last weekend. It's clear that he is quite settled with that Alpine, he has clearly got some pace with it. And here we are, Peter, and with a good chance of points for tomorrow. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that his performance will get a uh, likes by Pierre Gasly after that. Um, you know, it was a uh, it, it, it was a much better result for him. Um, certainly, obviously, quite a result. Um, but it was I did have my heart in my mouth for him to begin with because he left it quite late. It's a bit like I said with Ocon earlier, Gasly especially. He left it quite late on his runs to actually get through into uh, you know in, into the sort of competitive positions um and he uh he was uh, yeah he, he he's got the car into into a good position now and i hope that tomorrow he can he, he can just you know, he, he can sort of just hold a good race he's a good driver gasly and you know, and, you know obviously he's one of he won a race a few years ago he really needs to to show that he can move on to the next phase of his driving career. And obviously moving moving to Alpine, moving out of the Rebel program, all all, all the rest of it. Um this is his time to shine, effectively. And I think the you know if he if he's gonna make a statement you know about about his position and about his you know about about his place in, in F1, he needs to beat his teammates tomorrow, I'd say. How he does that, I don't know, but I'm not saying guys have got something to prove. But I really, but I, I would, I would say tomorrow he does need to. Um, I, I'd say at, at the very least he needs to beat his teammate. I think he's got the minerals to do that. He's got the car to do that, provided you know he doesn't overheat, doesn't DNF or the rest of it. We saw quite a few cars overheating last year. We you know, we saw issues, um, possibly temperature related. We don't know. Um, in in the in the lower down series, I'm obviously in, in quali. Um, Dancy needs well. I wouldn't say he needs a strong performance. It's not like his um, yeah. It's, it's not like his seat's on the line, but he does. I would say no. Again, no. No. I, I'm sorry, I'm correcting myself. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say he needs one. I would say he should um, he should get a good result tomorrow. And beating his teammate, I think, is going to be the first step towards that. Yeah, as we've seen Gasly, you know, he's had fairly easy pickings against uh, Sonoda for the last couple of seasons. And now he's got his, um, you know, he's got his chance to go with some someone who, you know, Ocon, who has been 
it's been quite good. He's been quite solid for the last few years, and it's definitely a, a good opportunity to show where he's at um, at the moment. So, severe P11 for Nico Hulkenberg. And I'll be completely honest, I thought Hulkenberg was going to get into Q3. His pace in the first uh, two quality sessions was electric. He was in the top 10. He was doing great. Only for him to drop out and start P11, which is I think is quite a shame. I mean, seeing um, a Haas, like, a first few times, like, P6, P7, like... I was quite shocked. Obviously, it trickles down when the Red Bulls and the Astons and all that kind of come into play. But I mean, looking at the times as well, he was only like three tenths, four tenths off of Gasly. So wasn't that off, like very, 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 very close to it. And I think has has potential this season. Um, they have been, well, they did quite, nah, last season they did all right, obviously with uh, Kevin Max and game points. I think Nico coming in, I put my hand up and I said um, in previous podcasts that Nico should not have joined. It should have been a uh, young development drivers, I think. However, because I thought he's been out of the game too long. Obviously, yes, he's been a super sub. He raced in, Jedi, um, in Aston Martin last year as well. Um, so I think it is possible that he can get points. I think has have potential to do well this season. Um I was just kind of shocked. Like he was just consistently putting up and and just being consistent with some of the other teams that we thought are quite stronger as well. But we'll see how the reliability is. Like reliability is, I think, going to be one of the crucial things throughout this entire season, especially also in Jeddah as well. Um, not as so much tire decoration. It it will be definitely how the heat will take place um, in the race as well. Obviously, it is will be slightly cooler. It'll be similar to how quality um, environment was. But I think even Magnuson as well, who we'll speak about a little bit later, P13, I think both houses have potential to get into the points for this race. And I think that might be my bold uh, prediction as well, potentially. Well, uh, come on, come on with the bold predictions. Uh, don't mind. But, uh, Jared, P12 for Zhou Guan Yu. Um, I mean, that's fairly impressive. You know, he was over two tenths faster than Bottas and not a gap that we're often used to seeing Joe um, ahead of Bottas. But, you know, P12 is a very competitive position for him to push on from tomorrow. Yeah, very much so. And our qualifying is teammate. Like you said, it's not something that you see on a regular basis considering how good Valtteri is on Saturdays and whatnot. So... Um, it's a good position for them to go. Um, you know, you'd hope that they have uh, an anonymous race in the sense of um, they just keep it clean and out of the walls and not hit any trouble because, yeah, this this race is always going to be one that attracts safety cars and, and crashes and whatnot. So you really don't want um, uh, this team, you know, Alpha to to hit any trouble because the midfield is so competitive. It's so tight at the moment. So any points lost um, could have big ramifications come the the end of the season. And, you know, we saw last year they tied on points with um, Aston Martin, but they were ahead on count back of results. So, you know, every race is going to be important for a, a team like Alfa Romeo. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's... A very competitive midfield, and I think any time uh, a team like like Haas or like Alfa Romeo um, or Alfa Tari are going to get opportunity to score points, they they're going to need to take that opportunity. And I think Joe's got a has a good a good one here. So Tom, we move on to the other Haas of Kevin Magnussen, and honestly, I think I want to just hear what your opinion. Do you agree with Sophia? Do you reckon that Magnussen could potentially challenge for a Points along with his teammates, were I do, yeah. Um, I think uh, I think K Max got the got the pace in him. Uh, I think the car's got the pace in it, and I also think that with K Max coming into this season, you know, he's not got an easy ride like he did alongside Schumacher. Um, he's got a teammate who, granted, yes, you know, he's a bit older than him. Has been on the block a few times, and a lot of people, including me, have said in the past that. Um, you know, he's he's um he's possibly a bit overrated or you know or, or, or what have you. He's still decently quick, Hockenberg. 
Um, and and I think K-Mag can potentially scrap for points. You know, he's right on the cusp. Again, if he gets a good launch, you know, you know provided he doesn't say that bog down in the second phase of his launch when he releases a second clutch or something. Um, you know, he, he could, you know, he, he could end up in the points by the end of sort of lap one, lap two. Um, again, I'm just, reliability is a thing that seems to be coming around this season because we've had, obviously, you know, Ferrari is, you know, they've run out of control of electronics already for Leclerc's car, as we all know. They've changed signs as engine. So only Ferrari power cars, I'd be a little bit sort of hesitant. You know, the same thing with the Red Bull power cars. Um, you know, Alpine is Alpine. So, you know, so provided the car doesn't overheat and then sort of sort of like go, go into go into a limp mode or you know, you know, you know, doesn't sort of you know, shut down or you know cook itself or whatever, it'll be yeah, he he could. Whether he will is a different story. Um and yes, I am sitting on the fence here. Um you know, he he, he definitely could, and I would say he should. But whether he will, well, let's let's find out. The ultimate politician's answer there from Tom Downey. Um, so we'll move on to to P fourteen Sophia uh, Valtteri Bottas, and it's kind of similar to what I was talking to uh, Jared with and what Jared uh, said. It's just it's going to be about making sure they make it to the end of the race. Hopefully, none of the Ferrari gremlins are going to affect them during the race. Make sure they get to the end. And given the nature of this circuit, there might be a point or a couple of points on offer. Yeah, I think the first part, making it to the end, I think that's probably the key thing for Alpha. Will I see them at points unless um, a major accident happens or Bartas does some good overtakes? It is possible on this track to do overtakes. We even saw it today, if you look at Formula 2, some great overtakes in some of these corners. So I definitely think it is possible. I think for him, he for Bartas, he just needs to have a consistent, clean race. Like he's obviously raced um, before at this track since it's been on the calendar. Obviously, previously with um, Mercedes as well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I I think more than anything, I feel like he can make up a few spots. Will I see him in points? It's more debatable, but I think he has a good shot to get maybe to P eleven, maybe up to P. 12 um but it was quite a surprising thing for him in qualifying he's not done very well in qualifying um even if we look at Bahrain as well he didn't do all right in Bahrain so I think he needs to start like looking into what's happening because he finished p13 or p14 I believe um around the same time at, in Bahrain in qualifying if I'm not corrected um I think I don't know what's happening with Alpha because Alpha, he was doing quite well last season, getting very close into like the top part of Q2, getting into Q1, I, as I like, Q3, I should say. I don't know what's happened this season. It's just completely 180 for him um, in qualifying so far. Yeah, very, very true. You know, Bottas, you know, has so much experience on his, um, on his shoulders, um, but sometimes it just doesn't it doesn't go well for him and we've seen that plenty of times what be it the the wheel of a Williams or a Mercedes but uh speaking of things that didn't go very well um Jawad um Max Verstappen um probably would have taken pole I think we would all agree here that Max probably would have taken pole but his uh his drive shaft decided to fail um which we don't know whether he'll be taking a penalty or not uh, tomorrow for a replacement if they've got to change anything but as it stands he'll be starting p15 so judge so on what lap of the race do you think he's gonna take the lead <laughs> yeah well like, i don't think he can do an ant and center and round them up on the first lap so we'll, we'll see probably halfway through it but like tom said earlier he could uh, max could start the race from bahrain and still win and he did win from 15th last year at spa um, overtaking is uh, possible at this track, as we've seen, and there's just so much pace in that car that is is mind blowing. And we know that if he was on pole, um, the margin would have been um, greater than it was from between. Um, uh, what do you call it? Perez and, and Alonso. <laughs> um, Sophia just pointed out that you know Alonso won from P14 in in one in asterisks. Um, 
from P14 in Singapore um, all those years ago. I don't think Red Bull are gonna um, <laughs> Red Bull are gonna do what um, Renault did back then to to get him to win because he's actually got the car pace to do so. So yeah, that's it's gonna be a matter of um, just a matter of time when we see him <laughs> get to the front. Yeah, um, as you said, the the nature of the track allows for overtaking, um, and even though they have shortened the DRS. Um, Zones around the track, there is still plenty of opportunities. I'm sure Max is not afraid to make an overtake uh, or two, as we've seen. So um, maybe uh, one to watch tomorrow. Um, Tom, Yuki Tsunoda, P16. I mean, I guess the only positive for him is that he's ahead of his teammate once again. Um, but otherwise, disappointing from Alpha Tauri. They really are just slipping backwards and are fast becoming one of the back. Uh, market teams. Yeah, not great from Yuki, to be honest. And in a season where he needs to be performing and getting good, consistent results, just not a good start, is it? Um, you know, he's her. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, Yuki, man. You know, your seat is under threat from, let's say, Iwasa, uh, Liam Lawson, um, the Ruvula, in, you know, in, in inserts, uh, um, uh, you know, to basically in, insert rebel driver here. Um, no, Sophia, not Zimbaloni. Um, and uh, I saw that. Um, you know, so he's a uh, you, you, you keep really needs to have some good weekends. I know, you know, Jeddah's not that easy a circuit, but all the drivers are on more or less a level playing fields, um, in terms of experience on this track because it's, it's only the third time we've been there. And most of the drivers have driven there at least once. You know, you know, most of them have driven it three times, um, or will have driven it three times. Uh, you know, by uh, by uh, close of play tomorrow, so you can use a good race. He needs a clean race. Um, he's uh, yeah, he's just oh, yeah, yeah, Yuki. You know, you're a. He's one of those ones where it's like everybody likes him because he's funny and you know he swears and. And you know he's 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 got a bit of you got a bit of sort of like character and and personality, but I just don't think he's cutting the mustard at the minute. And the car's not helping by any stretch. You know, Alpha Tari have really struggled since the um since the new regs came in. I bet they wish they could go back to their twenty twenty one spec. Um, but it's I don't think the F one thing is working for him. And I also think that if Honda weren't as Involved with Red Bull as they are, I think Yuki would have been probably been out the door by now. Um, so I don't know. I don't think he's going to get points tomorrow. I think he's too far down the grid. Um, I hope he doesn't have any reliability issues because obviously, you know, he's one of the two Red Bull power cars that haven't chewed themselves yet. Uh, so let's uh, let's see what he can do. Um, I fear a bit that you know he's what p15 p15 16 you know he's right he's down there sort of like he he's going to be right in the mix into turn one you know if, if he misses a braking point because his tires are cold you know or his brakes are cold if he snatches at the brake going into turn one you know we we could we could see a we could see a, a bit of shenanigans going on i hope not and i and i hope it is a clean race but um Let's see what he does tomorrow. I'm a bit apprehensive about him. Yeah, no, yeah, we'll definitely see what he can do tomorrow. Um, Sophia, Alex Albon, P17. And I, I had so much expectation. I feel like I've had the same conversation about Hulkenberg like 15 minutes ago. Williams looked quick. They were doing really well. And then he finishes 17. Like, it was odd. Yeah, I mean, even James Bow was like, we will do quite well, like even free quality, like we will do quite well. This is a good circuit for us. I mean, if you look at free practice again, you can't take too much word on it. They were doing quite well in free practice and doing some good runs as well from that. So from them to hype it up and then it just like a disappointment, like Ferrari season last season. Um, I I don't know. <laughs> He did finish last. Obviously, his teammate has finished last. I think Albon has potential to make moves, though. While he has not has as much experience compared to some of the other drivers slightly ahead of him, 
I think that he has potential to make a couple, two to three maybe uh, spots. He's really good at overtaking. And also, the Williams, for some reason, surprisingly, is actually being quite quick. Like, we were expecting them to be quite low in the grid, but now in the, like, constructors, but that's more so McLaren at the moment. Um, I... I think it's possible. Like James Val has been very positive um, since coming into Williams this season as well, and you have seen some great strides through development and how quick some of, uh, how quick the Williams is sometimes, uh, depending on how the circuit is and what they're running. Um, I think the biggest question is: Can they last a whole race in this weather? I think that might be a little bit of an issue. I hopefully can see that both of the Williams will stay. Um, till the end of the race, but I think the more, I think they have good race pace, and I think if they can last to the end of the race, I think they can make, move up a couple of spaces. Definitely not on the points; they're way too low for the points, but definitely a few places up. Yeah, the, I think there is some pace in that Williams. I think that's something we do um, need to take some positive away from that. Their long runs, as you mentioned, um, did look quite good. Um, Jared, the last. Driver will talk about in depth because the other two it's not really all that much to say. But uh, Nick De Vries, um had a troubled start to his um, quali runs. Of course, he spun it um, at turn one, and again, just not quite on the pace of his teammate um, Yuki Tsunoda. And I think he's probably struggling more than most rookies around the around the Jeddah track. Yeah, it's not looking good for. Um... De Vries at the moment and like you said he did have the problem early on he lost the car under braking into turn one and cooked that set of tires and then yeah from there he kind of just didn't um uh recover and uh Sophia's just pointed out too that he's also the only rookie that hasn't raced at this track either um the pre other rookies that had f2 experience here um De Vries wasn't he in F2 in 2021 when they first came to this track. So um, it's a bit difficult for him. And, you know, I thought coming into the season, De Vries would easily have the measure of his teammate Snowder. And it's just, you know, not looking that way at the moment. And with, with such a tricky car that the Alpha Tower is, you know, it's really hard for someone of De Vries's talent to really show that. Um, like, you know, the Williams he had last year, you know, to score points on debut and Monza looks better than what the Alpha Tauri is at the moment. Yeah, exactly. Um you can only hope that as as he gets more settled and he gets a bit of a little bit more experience around these tracks, we'll start seeing the Nick de Freeze that we did see at Monza. But um I'll quickly round this off. Uh Norris turning into the final corner, broke his steering arm and a rookie error from from Lando, um, which put him out. And then Logan Sargent, who just could not string a lap together. Um, but it has been announced that he has been committed to race, he, even though he didn't meet the um 107% time, it's because of his laps in in practice have been deemed sufficient. So he'll most likely start either from the back or up from the pit lane. I'm not um, too sure. I guess it'll be up to Williams where, they, um, where they'll start him. But we are through all 20 drivers, which means we can get onto the wonderful predictions. Um, so, Tom, we will start with you. Of course, you've already given us your predictions on the preview show, but have they changed? So who is going to be on your podium for tomorrow? Um, I'm going to say so I'm going to channel that energy, channel those vibes and chow you're about to smile um, I'm going to say Alonso P1, P1. Um, Checo P2 because I think he's going to get a little bit undone by perhaps a safety car or a yellow flag or a VSC or something. And then P3, I'm going to go for an outside bet. This is also going to be my bold prediction. I'm going to say Carlos Sainz. Oh, that's a, a very ambitious podium from Tom. Uh, Sophia, is yours going to be a bit more relaxed or is it going to be as bold as Tom's? 
I mean, I was thinking about science, given like the positions and everything, but then I remember Ferrari's reliability. So probably not. Um, I think it's probably going to be, I think it's going to be Perez, Alonso, Russell. I think that, I think it's just going to stay how it is. Um, and I feel like that might be even bold as well. But yeah, how the grid is starting is how it's going to end. Okay. And um, Jared? Uh, yeah, I almost thought that Tom was going to uh, steal my top three, but he put science uh, up there. So, yeah, I was going to say Alonso for the win, um, Perez, and I'm surprised no one's um, put Verstappen on the podium, so I'm going to put Max up there for, for P3 because, yeah, he'll, he'll climb his way back up the field, but it won't be enough to, to take the win. I was really really hoping no one was going to say Max was going to be like, I'm going to be <laughs> I'm gonna I'm going to say... Um, I th- personally, if I'm going to go with Checo, is going to win the race, however much it kills me to say that. But then I'm going to go Max Verstappen P2. I think the Red Bulls are just going to be that fast that Perez will have enough of a gap that Verstappen won't be able to catch up. And then third place, I'm going to go with Fernando. We're going to go ver- well, pair there a lot. Uh, it's the new, it's a new top three. Um, now onto bold predictions, Tom. We've kind of already heard yours already, but have you got an even bolder prediction to give us? Hamilton falls out the points. Ooh. Okay, okay. And Sophia, we've kind of heard, heard yours. Are you going to stick with the two halves in the points? Yes. Yeah. Yep, I think both passes and the points. Just about nine and ten. That's probably it. <laughs> okay. And God. Um random one, but Yuki Sonoda will score points. Okay. Yuki Sonoda score points. That is bold. Um <laughs> I'm I'm gonna go with one of the McLarens to finish in the points. I know it may seem not as bold because Oscar is already in the points but I think the McLaren's pace has probably been a little bit uh, sweetened in in quality compared to the actual uh, race pace so guys um, before we uh, we finish the race I'll give you a chance to to promote whatever you wish to promote within reason Um, so Tom uh, where can our listeners find more from you um, so in terms of motorsports shenanigans, um, I co-host the, uh, well, I am one of the co-hosts of the Good Talk uh, podcast alongside your good self, uh, Louis. Um, also, uh, Sophia and I do a show called Formula Talk, which has done five or six episodes where we look at everything um, F2, F3. We're going to be look- looking at the upcoming F1 Academy Basically, motor racing that isn't F1 um, is probably the easiest way to put it. Not absolutely everything, um, because there aren't there aren't uh, enough hours in the day. But um, but yeah, but primarily the sort of support series, if you like. So you can find that uh, on you know, every, everywhere you can find Grid Talk. Uh, you could, you can also find Formula Talk. It's all under the same roof. Brilliant, and Sophia. Yeah, um, obviously Formula Talk, uh, which is part of Grid Talk. Um, also, you can find me with Everything F1. Uh, we do podcasts, articles, and media at www.everythingf1.com. We do a weekly podcast. We do two podcasts, actually, sorry, now that the season started. So a Sunday race review. And then also we have interviews with formal, former drivers and uh, members within the motorsport community as well. And you can find that on all uh places that you can find uh, podcasting. Brilliant. And Jared, uh, you're from Hit the Apex. So where can uh, our viewers find more from you? Yeah, um, you can listen to my show on all the good podcast platforms, Apple, Spotify, Google, YouTube. I also uh, write for a website called The Raw as well. Um, Been uh, doing live blogs for all the Formula One races for about 
10 seasons now. So, um, yeah, I'm up ridiculous hours uh, doing lap by lap coverage of, of all the uh, GPs. So, yeah, looking forward to hitting it again tomorrow. Brilliant. And of course, make sure to follow our F1 Chronicle on Twitter and also make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to find more from us. We've passed over a thousand subscribers. We've even passed the 1500 subscribers now, which has been amazing. Thank you for all the support that we've had in the last week. Our subscriber numbers have absolutely blown. So if you are new, thank you so much. And if you aren't new, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Um, the support, as I said, recently has been incredible so of course you can find grip talk which is available on youtube where the majority of our episodes are recorded live we're also on amazon fire spotify google Podcasts, apple music verbal and pocket cast just search f from on grid talk and we have a back catalog of over 260 shows so if you are stuck with something to listen to between now and the race um, we've got plenty of shows to listen to not just qualifying and race results um please consider supporting the channel on patreon so we can get mics lights and better recording equipment um for all our hosts and if you're feeling nice and you really love the podcast please give us a five-star review on itunes or spotify it really does help um people find our podcast and it's great to hear feedback um well, it's just, yeah, it's great to hear bit of feedback in general. We'll, of course, be back tomorrow with the Saudi race review. So thank you so much for listening to the Grid Talk podcast, powered, of course, by Bet Online. We'll be back tomorrow. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>